This would be about uh, container networks, uh, well, presumably rootless, as you might have guessed, and pasta. So what is pasta? As you might have guessed, I'm Italian, but I'm not talking about that. Um, so let me show you something. Right, here I am. Uh, I'm on a, on a server, and I do this. And I wrote. And let's take the server down. Am I really root? No, I'm not root. Um, right, so great, luckily. Um, what's, uh, what's the trick then? Uh, wait, it didn't get through. Uh, did, I, did I just reinvent and share? And I'm just so enthusiastic to, to, to show it to you. Uh, so, okay, let, let's try to understand where I am. Uh, and the good thing sometimes is to look at networks or network interfaces. Mm. Okay, so I have a look back, and I have another network interface, but it's down. So, how, do you, how am I here? I mean, this, is, this is, makes no sense, right? Um, okay, let's, let's get out of this madness and go back to my host, have a look at what I have here. Okay, that, that makes more sense, right? I have an Ethernet interface that is up. Um, looks similar. Uh, so, okay, the, the MAC address is different though. And it's not the same interface because one is down and the other one is up. So, mm. okay, I read the man page for you. Um, I actually wrote it too, but, um, and I will now try this. And I will check addresses. I have into this strange root, no root thing. Uh, oh yeah, no, okay, great. Uh, so this is, up, or at least administratively up. The state is unknown because I didn't send any packet yet. Um, I have some addresses, IPv4, a bunch, bunch of IPv6, link local. Uh, great, okay, this, this starts making more sense. And let's see if I can reach <coughs> the internet. Sorry, we talked about pasta, so yeah, great. Uh, so IPv6 is up, I see IPv6 is up, uh, DNS resolution was working. Uh, okay, so did it just re-implement Podman? Uh, no, because it's full of stuff here and the container will be clean, right? I just, just started it. Okay, um, so let me quickly explain the trick to you. Um, and note that I'm really not root, I'm really, really not root. Okay, I can't delete one thing from here. Um, sorry, LS, I can probably do it, but let's say I want to, you know, bash. Yeah, nope. Um, right, so, uh, no, I didn't re-implement Podman, and in fact, Podman can also use this thing. Um, oops, let's see if I find, right? Uh, sorry. Okay, and let's have a look at this. Okay, pretty similar. So the interface is still this strange name. Well, that was the interface on the server. I have the same addresses. Let, let me check that this works. Yeah, I can install letter three. Um, Great, so this seems to be some user mode networking. Um, and before I finish revealing the trick to you, I just mentioned user mode networking, and it might look like I'm copying packets from user space and back, and, and this is terribly slow, right? I mean, somebody probably played with Slurp. So, hmm. okay, let me go back to my strange tool here. Um, actually, sorry, let me, let me run a hyper server first. So I demonize it so that I can just keep a big terminal here. I hope you all see here, or is it hidden? No, it, it's okay. okay. Um, great, so, mm -hmm. 
And now, mm, how do I reach that? Well, it looks very local. I will try with local loss. Uh, and I'm, yeah. I'm being quite arrogant, come on. I, I know that it's fast and, and, and I can give it 32 megabytes of TCP window and, and zero copy and disable Mega algorithm. Uh, right, uh, maybe look even, let me do two flows. Hmm? Great, 60 gigs per second. So, right. Um, okay, now I can reveal to you the trick. So. I'm not root. I created a network interface, and this thing is pretty fast. Let's, let's look at some diagrams. What's the trick? Um, so how does networking work when you are nobody? Or, well, in my case, you are as preview, but it doesn't make a real difference. So you don't have root. Um, I don't have capnet admin, right? I didn't show you, but Trust me, I didn't cheat on that, so I cannot have interfaces. But Linux allows you, if you detach your user namespace and the network namespace at the same time, since Linux 3.8, um, which is a few years ago, like five, six years ago, I think, um, at the same time, we can actually create a network interface somewhere. So we can actually create a network interface because we are UID zero, so we are technically, you might call it root for convenience, but that's not root. That's just UID zero in a user namespace. And UID zero can do a lot of things, like creating network interfaces. Um, oh, and there is the Tantap driver. It's a kind of, kind of old implementation, but quite useful. Um, this thing creates a network interface on one hand, and on the other hand, you have a file descriptor. It's not a socket, it's a file descriptor. So Sockets can be represented by file descriptors, but it's not the same thing. Um, and on these file descriptors, you get frames, and you can write frames, Ethernet frames. So the whole thing, you know, like, uh, let it, it go on a cable. Don't have it here, so it goes, oh, no, it goes in the air. Uh, right, and then we know that regular users can open TCP and UDP sockets, for sure. I mean, when you start a browser, you don't do sudo Firefox, right? You just start it. So are you thinking what I'm thinking? If we do this. So we have the network namespace. We just created this tab device, which gives me the Ethernet interface inside that. Um, and down there, I have the internets. And then I know that as a regular user, I can do TCP and UDP sockets. I just need to fill in that something. I'm not saying that it's so simple, but looks starts looking doable. Um, and that something, namely, needs to take the Ethernet frames away, take the IP, uh, sorry, the Ethernet header, the IP headers away, put the payload into layer four sockets. Uh, and then I think we are done. And when we get something from the internet, uh, we need to ask the kernel. So we are a, this something is a user space application. And we need to ask the kernel, where is this bucket coming from? And then tell our network namespace. And we have a number of ways to. So we have, we have two addresses, essentially, right? So just a reminder for everybody, um, layer one is the physical network, physical layer. Layer uh, two is something where you, where you can put bytes on, right? Um, the, the data layer. So, and then you have layer three, which is IP, or can be other things, but in our case, it's, it's IP. Layer four is a transport, so TCP, UDP, ICMP, TCCP, whatever you want, and then the other layers are uh, more related to, yeah, YouTube. Um, so, great. And why am I doing this? So what's the whole point? No, no, not because we can actually, yeah, also because we can, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it, but um, the, the important thing here is that I don't have root, I don't have capnet admin, so if I'm doing a container like I just with Podman and somebody hacks it, 
because I didn't apply security patches or because I'm dumb and, and I just map ports um, without authentication or something. Well, I have no embarrassing consequences or limited embarrassing consequences. No, it could, could be much, much worse. Um, and let's say even if nobody does that, uh, we have the safety that what a user can do is just open and connect and bind to um, TCP, UDP, and ICMP ping, so the so-called ping sockets. Um, so that means I have the safety that nobody will spoof uh, packets because, you know, if you can send arbitrary frames, like if you can spoof ARP, you are in control of a network, essentially. You are telling everybody, this is me, and this is him, and this is her, and you know, so, so that has serious consequences if you, um, if you can do um, arbitrary, craft, craft type uh, arbitrary frames. And it can be quite fast and also flexible now. So it's, I, I would start saying that it looks like a good thing. So what, what, would, what would have been the alternative? The alternative would have been that um, I went there to my server and I created a container and then I would have done IP add something, uh, created a bridge, uh, did something with NAT filter maybe, just to, to you know, drop a bit of um, the, the really, really suspicious things like uh, ARP frames that come out with totally random MAC addresses and, and stuff like that. But that would have involved that I needed root. And um, I realized there was a talk about that actually yesterday. Um, so. I want to, to also state that this is a limitation for some applications. Maybe you are really running uh, ARP proxy inside a container. If you want to do that, hey, you need root. But then there is a good reason for it. Um, and OK, that's an ugly workaround, right? I mean, I'm appending frames, uh, appending headers, removing headers in a user space. Um, so you're going to fix it, right? No, uh, I don't think so. I don't think there is something to fix. So there are reasons why this is not allowed. Um, and I mentioned some of these reasons. Um, so, right, I mean, an unprivileged user uh, shouldn't be in control of the network as well. So this is kind of, uh, you know, there are many ways to divide unprivileged and privileged user. That's uh, pretty much the Linux and BSD way. Uh, other operating systems do completely different uh, reasonings. Um, there are, I heard of operating systems uh, running a UI at, at ring zero, but uh, Linux luckily doesn't. So, um, and okay, let's say like in the talk yesterday, we do it for them, but are they really unprivileged then? Mm, I would start having some doubts. So, um, I think that if a network interface, is, if a network namespace like we did uh, as an interface, then we should only, we should follow that philosophy, okay? It doesn't have root for a reason and we should stick to it. Um, because yeah, these are the few advantages. We really don't need to, to, to even debate whether it has privileges or not. And um, actually, yeah, implementing head, um, appending headers and removing headers is a way of ensuring isolation. We are in control of this and we check that, you know, the kernel once forces us to append those headers as we send packets out from the bottom of the diagram, right? So when we are there on the layer four sockets, um, the kernel doesn't allow us to, to say, to, to put a IP address and a checksum there. No, it, uh, it says, I do it, I take care of it. I don't trust you. Um, so that's how you implement isolation. Um, I cheated a bit in the demo earlier. So we were actually in the left case. Um, so I didn't do so much uh, in that thing because uh, yeah, I used a local connection in the demo, it's a bit easier. Um, and in that case, I already have layer four sockets because um, I am doing a connection from iperf from the container to, to the host. Well, host is not, is a bit of a misnomer, right? But it's still the same host. It's a different uh, partition of the host, so to say. And that I already have layer four sockets and I can just splice data. Splice is a system call in Linux that just allows you to splice to a pipe 
from a pipe to a socket, then from that socket to a pipe, pipe to socket, um, and you don't need to do anything special. However, um, of course, we are just carrying payload there. So that means we have no addressing, and that means I can just use the loopback interface to do that. Um, so if we are actually to the inter, uh, we, we want to go to the internet, um, we need to, to do this trick that I was uh, mentioning earlier. So we really need to append headers, remove headers. Um, otherwise, um, so if somebody is familiar with um, the pod one situation as, a, as of a while ago, um, there was a way to be really fast with this trick um, and with some amazing tricks. Uh, on the other hand, you would lose the, the IP address from outside. So every, all the traffic would look like it was coming from the host and that's not so convenient if you have applications inside there uh, that need to, for example, authenticate uh, based on IP address or filter or route. So, um, okay, now we pretty much got, so this is pasta, okay? Um, that's not the thing you eat anymore. Uh, that's, that's something in between. Um, the acronym, I don't even remember it. I mean, if you want, just go to a website and it's written there. Um, so we got what it does. Uh, I just wanted to present a few peculiarities uh, that makes it, in my opinion, reasonably safe. Um, so we don't do dynamic memory allocation there. Uh, and funny because we are dealing with packets, so it would be natural to read from a socket, allocate uh, 100,500 uh, bytes or a bit more um, than free it when we sent it. Now, if we are careful, uh, the kernel has already buffers, so we, we can use them. We just need to avoid dropping things from kernel queues before it's, before it's time to do so. so when I get a packet from the socket, I need to remember that my container needs to, to read it, and maybe it loses it. Maybe nobody's reading it, or maybe they are too late, or maybe it's out of the congestion window because I sent too fast, so I need to keep it there. Other, I have no other space. I, I'm not allocating memory, so um, I can use message peak. So message peak is a flag for the receive and receive-like system calls that allow you to um, yeah, just look at it, don't drop it. No, I, let's pretend I didn't read it. Um, and these are some classes of, of memory related potential security issues like, I don't know, a double free heap overflow and stuff like that. Uh, it's, not, it's not completely safe. I still can have stack overflows. It's a bit harder perhaps, and it's a bit easier for, for my mind actually to, to keep track of, of, of the stuff I'm doing, which uh, is probably an important factor for security. Um, the TCP adaptation, so there is some TCP adaptation. This thing needs to keep track of the connections. And however, we have already two stacks around. It's actually, in the case of a container, um, the same kernel and two instances of TCP stacks. So we don't need to do really much in terms of congestion window and keeping tracks of, of you know, metrics and expanding the window, shrinking the window. How much memory do we have? No, we can ask them, what is your congestion window? Yeah, okay, I use it. Um, it doesn't do that if you want it. If you don't want it, that's why it was so confusing, perhaps, but it can also be convenient. Uh, so we have the same addresses inside Podman and outside. Um, full IPv6 support, but I hope Maybe we don't have to mention it in 2023. Um, um, yeah, actually, I could have just went, gone into um, this pasta config net that I showed you earlier and asked for a DHCP, uh, asked for, a, for an address via DHCP v6 or DHCP. Um, did I say past? Right, yes, I did. So let me cover a bit of this project history. Um, it's not original at all, it's a big scam. Um, so, Slurp has been doing that for 18 years, actually. Um, sorry, is it 10 minutes, but 15? Ah, to the questions, okay, not to the, yeah, great, thanks. Um, so Slurp has been doing that for 18 years. I'm really not presenting anything new, probably. Um, we started it for virtual machines, uh, namely Qbeer developers came to my team and, and us. But we don't want to use Lear because it has a bad name. 
but it's really convenient. Can you do something like that? We want to run our container, uh, container with virtual machines, that's, that's cube virt, um, without root. And if possible, we would also like to avoid NAT. So we started it uh, for virtual machines, and then at some point we realized that mm, containers uh, had exactly the same thing, so much that um, for QEMO, you have this lib slip. So zip comes from, from the 90s, right? Uh, I, the story is kind of complicated. I will not cover it for the sake of time. But um, it was a way for when, when universities started offering dial-up shell accounts to students or professors to have a natural internet access by tunneling everything you wanted into your dial-up connection that was supposed just to connect to your uh, university server. And then from there, you add routing. So you could, you know, if you tunnel everything into that, uh, then you could reach whatever you want, not, not just uh, the uh, resources of the university that nobody cared about. So um, this is, uh, right, uh, that's an old trick, and, and somebody had a really brilliant idea, in my opinion, to, to use it for QEMO. And then for another brilliant idea for Podman. Uh, and, and there is something similar for Docker, actually. Um, so there is something already very similar. Also, this lirp for NFNS is like pasta, and lips lirp is like past. Both acronyms are available on the, the, the explanation of the acronyms uh, are available on, on the website. Um, so, but yeah, it had a bad name. Uh, well, okay, nowadays you leak 50 bytes in one day and, and you get a CV, yeah, fair. Um, however, uh, also performance-wise, uh, it wasn't really meant for, for you know, the, the bazillion bits per second that we need to have nowadays. It was meant to, yeah, dial up, uh, you know, a bit more than Telnet, uh, post-BBS era, I would say, or still BBS era. Um, so, it doesn't support TCP window scaling, which means 64K is all you can send, and then, mm, huck. Okay, 64K more. That's slow. Um, IPv6 support wasn't really there. So IPv6 was actually introduced a bit before, uh, but you know there was no reason to use it. We still had plenty of IPv4 addresses in the world. And, um, right, so, we had realized that Pasta was born, and then uh, with a lot of help from Podman's <laughs> development team, we, uh, uh, we shipped the uh, native integration I just showed you in Podman 4.4, that was in January this year. Um, since two days ago, um, this is now supported in Builder, so um, if you're familiar with it, um, that's a um, facility creating container, that can build container images in Podman. Um, it's supported by Libbeard, Cubebeard, a stack preview. We are now very few, but very committed developers and lots of occasional contributors and Podman users came up with everything possible. Um, let me cover recent developments, just in case you followed this project recently. So um, somebody said that it's not fast enough. Okay, great. Uh, what, what can we do better? So this is only applies to VMs, so it's not really pasta. Um, we have a Unix domain socket to QEMU, and that means copy to the socket, copy from the socket. QEMU does, needs to do that, and PASS needs to do that. Okay, we can just bypass QEMU all together with BIOS user, um, and there, it's actually faster than, don't quote me on this, but because we don't have very nice benchmarks yet, but it's actually faster than whatever you could do with root and the bridge. Um, so yeah, we now copy all the addresses and, and the routes, not just one. You saw that I had so many IPv, uh, IPv4 addresses there because we had some problems with uh, cloud environments, some users reported, and WireGuard almost works out of the box finally. That, that's a bit complicated, but it looks like a popular use case for Podman users. Um, so these new use cases. Um, one funny thing somebody came up with is uh, what if I want to just have throwaway containers and uh, deploy them quickly with their own address and I don't tell the host anything? Hmm. Interesting. With IPv6, it's actually the case. Somebody, sometimes you have a slash 64, um, so yeah. Um, it's actually possible. 
so in that case, pasta would just bind an address that the host doesn't have, nobody has ever seen, except for the prefix. Um, so you can just have a completely separate container with its own address and assign it uh, with a NDP responder uh, that's built into past. So we advertise the prefix and nothing else. We assign a pseudo random MAC address. We take care of it. We keep track of it. And we could actually deploy a lot of containers without really knowing much about the network or really not thinking much about it. Uh, and some people already use Mac VLAN for it. Uh, but it takes a few tricks to, to, to set up, and it's not rootless. Um, another less funny, maybe more less visionary, but uh, this, this starts being important. You have IPv4 applications that maybe you don't have a source code for, but they are IPv4, and you have an IPv6 only setup. Maybe somewhere in, in Central Europe, this, this starts being a problem. You start paying quite a lot for an IPv4 address. So there are RFCs for this, and Pasta could be a good candidate. Uh, you can find more details in the uh, bug reports there. Um, another one we really need to take care of now is how did I do port uh, forwarding there? Mm, you didn't even see it because I didn't do it explicitly. It was automatic. Um, and you can do it with Podman configuration options and, and everything, but um, for Docker, actually, they really need it uh, via rootless kit. And also for Podman custom networks, it would be really nice if Podman could uh, happily decide without stopping or restarting the container to, or, or past itself actually to, to map a uh, new port. Um, and we are uh, with that going into a generalized flow stable. We don't want to implement OpenV switch, but we are dangerously, dangerously close to it. Start preparing your questions now. So um, if you want to try this out, please do, and please especially report bugs. Uh, we have mailing lists, we are a bit old school, but don't be afraid to mess up. We understand that many people are not used to um, patch-based or email-based workflows. Uh, there is an IRC channel on Libera, it's past. Um, there are weekly meetings that are open to everybody. If you just even want to listen to the dramas we have, um, it's, it's can be quite funny. Um, and every, all this information, you find it at past.top. Um, credits, yeah, um, so David has been reworking a lot of stuff recently. Um, Laurent is, is, is uh, taking care of the bazillion bytes per second there. Uh, Paul from Podman's development team is, is got it into build out this week and, and, and he always helps a lot. Um, Lamy um, is a packager for wide Linux and he presented a lot of new use cases. Um, Lane did the uh, Libbert integration and Yon is making the kernel nicer to us, or trying to. And we have a lot of, really, a lot of uh, contributors and packagers for, so packages are available for Arch, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, RHEL, um, a few more probably. Questions? So the question from Paolo is whether, um, when I was referring to the cheating case where I just have local, local traffic, um, I'm referring to rootless. The top. Uh, yes, yes, um, okay, so rootless, does rootless kit allow, is, is rootless kit the part that um, allows us to, to skip the setup, the, to just create a bridge to the host? Uh, no, actually, so rootless kit, what it does, um, okay, rootless kit is a, is a pile of things. In this case, it's what uh, rootless kit does, uh, the trick of copying packets back and forth. Not with splice, they use receive message, send message, it's not very different, um, but that's the part that it does. And you can, you have it actually as default port forwarder for Podman because it's faster, 
uh, but you don't preserve the source IP address. So that's that's the part it does. Yeah. Um, so first question is uh, of of two is if this can be used with Podman network commands. So as far as I know, yes, since Thursday. Um, but you probably know better than me. <laughs> and if you don't, let's, let's, let's check it out. But I think Paul just, just did this. Um, because it was just, I just did it with Podman run, as you've seen. Um, and I think now, finally, the code has been moved to the proper place. So we can actually use it for Podman network, I think. That's my understanding, yeah. Um, so the second question is, when will Pasta become the default in Podman? You suggested 4.6, um, right? Um, I, I hope we are on track. <laughs> um, yeah, might be tight, but uh, yeah. Um, right, so the question is, um, I showed that I would connect to localhost and connect to the host, and maybe I want to really connect to localhost as localhost, host, 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 like, like, mm. yes. Uh, and yeah, actually, one of the reasons why we are uh, reworking the, the NAT uh, model is to allow to, right now we just allow to disable this functionality. So to map uh, nothing, or to map everything, or to map like the d address of the default gateway to the host, um, but it is not very flexible. So we are actually adding more options. And what the default is, it has to be seen. We need to, to, to check with many people, like what do they really expect? Because if you come from VMs, you have different expectations. As, as yeah, right, yeah. I can check on matrix. Okay, thank you.